Hi, I'm Judith, a Derwent Ambassador. Some of you will already know me from workshops or demonstrations from around the country, or you will know me from the Derwent Facebook Art of Wellness group that's been really active recently. Derwent have asked me to do a live draw-along session with you today, and we're going to create a beautiful peacock butterfly in colour pencils. I'm going to be using one of my favourite of the ranges, which is Pro Colour, but you can use any of them. Now, a few days ago, we uploaded some of the outlines, well, it's an outline of the butterfly, which hopefully you will have had chance to draw it out onto some cartridge paper or your favourite paper. And there was a list of materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera angle now so it's facing at the artwork for you. Okay, so a butterfly is symmetrical, which means that both of the wings are the same. So I've already done this one for you. So you can see with colour pencil, you can build up lots and lots of layers and it becomes really, really vibrant. Now I haven't used a huge amount of pencils. You don't need to, to get this effect. We're going to start off today with the yellows, the purples and the blues. So with your pencils, if you could please get me out a pale yellow, if you have one, and a lilac and a pale blue. So if you're using Pro Colour, the ones I'm going to use are, I've chosen light blue 37, I've chosen primrose yellow and I've chosen imperial purple. It's okay, so you can see where the dips are. Now I've got a colleague with me today, Distance, and he's going to be helping by answering all the questions because I don't like to break a broadcast by answering loads of questions at the same time because it gets broken for you. Okay, so we just want to move the camera over for you. Okay, so we're going to start here, this bit. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, so I always use my pencils really, really sharp. So you can see how sharp they are. One of the reasons is your paper is made up of dips and furrows. And with colour pencil, what you want to do is push the pigment into the paper. And that way you can build up lots and lots and lots of light layers. If you use them blunt, what you're going to do is squash the surface of the paper and then you can't push the pigment into it. So with your yellow, and this C shape area that you will have drawn out, Just fill this area to the top of the sea with the yellow. Now you'll see also I'm constantly turning my pencil. The reason for that is a really good habit to get into. It makes sure you've got the sharpest point of the pencil at all times so you're pushing that pigment into the paper. Now you don't need to press too hard if you're using them sharp. Okay so you've got your yellow in there. Okay now we had this nice blue so a nice mid-tone blue just add some nice blue. Now the blue on Pro Colour is so vibrant I think that's why I like them so much. They're just packed full of pigment. And flick it going that way, the opposite way. So you're flicking it into the layers. Okay. 
which is brilliant. Okay, so we've now got this lovely imperial purple. Now imperial purple looks really, really dark in its pencil form, but when you add it to the paper, it's really vibrant. Now you hardly need to use any pressure with this. It's so full of pigments. So on the left of your C shape, very, very lightly. So you're using almost like a, a tickle on the paper. It's just so packed full of pigment purple and it's so strong. You don't need to use much pressure at all. And you're going to lightly overlay just over the yellow and the, and the blue. Okay, so you hardly need to use any pressure at all. Colour pencil is naturally translucent, which means that each layer that you do can shine through the next one that you put on top. And this is why people use it in layers. Okay, so this area is looking really nice now. Now you'll see that on the template, you had a circle here. So just around here, I want you to shade some purple, just around the outside of it, just random. And just loose. But what you don't want to do is go round and round in circles. You want it to look natural. And you can draw some dots just to increase the values. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so then put those away, but keep your yellow out. If you could keep your yellow pencil out for me, that would be brilliant. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the camera slightly. Now don't worry if you can't keep up. With these live videos, I save them afterwards, so they're going to remain on the page. And you can replay them at your own speed and pause them at any point. Now there's a small little, it's almost like a square shape here. Using the same pressure that you would probably write with, just fill this area. with yellow. Now you'll see here on my drawing, I've got a pencil line. Okay, so just zooming in so you can see here. Now with colour pencil, you want to remove graphite as you work really. Otherwise it starts to like colouring in. So just with a precision eraser, now you'll see, I always sweep it away with a brush. What you don't want to do with colour pencil is rub it with your hand because the heat of your hand is going to melt the wax and it's going to move the pigment. And it will make it messy after a while. So always brush it. Now these are quite handy. These are precision erasers. Let me zoom back out. These are precision erasers with a brush on the end. And it means that you have it all in one tool. Okay, so let me zoom back in to this area. So now you've erased that line, just blend it out a bit. Okay. Now, there's a, a line here, a band. One of the reasons why I like Pro Colour is they're a really firm pencil. It's not so much that they're hard, but they're a firm pencil and they hold the point really well. Now there's a tool called an embossing tool, which you can use to make a line and it embosses the paper and you can skip over it. With Pro Color, you don't necessarily need to use that. So what I want you to do is, with your pencil at a 90 degree, or almost a 90 degree angle to the paper, I want you to draw firmly lines. Let me just move the camera so you can see to here, sorry. 
lines across this band area here. Vary them and put some wiggles in. You'll see them more when we put the black over the top. You've got to press really hard. It's got to dent the paper. Working light is no good for something like this. You see I've pressed so hard I've snapped it. And that's fine. Okay, so just sharpen it again. So you can see on the camera how hard I've pressed there. Now you'll hear my pencil sharpener grinding away in the background because I use the helical pencil sharpeners, the super points. And that's how I get it. my really sharp point. Okay, so make sure it's embedded into the paper. And then we're going to skip over that with our darker pencil later. Okay, so you can see on the camera, because the light's catching it, just how hard we've pressed there. Let's zoom out again. Okay, now on this side of the butterfly's wing, you'll see there's a series of yellow dots. Now we've used the same method there for putting in the yellow dots. And then the red is going to skip over the top. So with your yellow pencil, what I'd like you to do is put in some random dots don't forget to hold your pencil at a 90 degree angle to your paper. So it's embossing into the surface of the paper. Make them random. You don't want them in the same places. So can you see those? The light's quite good today. It's actually picking them up. Brilliant. Okay, lovely. So you can put your yellow away for me. And if you could get out... Um, say, three reds, or at least two reds. So the reds I've chosen is I've chosen a primary red and a bright red and I've chosen a crimson lake which is a darker red and we're going to lay the colours into the main section of the wing. Okay so we're going to start with the main wing and I'm going to I want to start with primary red Now, remember to keep your pencil sharp, really, really sharp. Skip over your yellow dots that you put in. Can you see, if I zoom in, because you embossed them into the paper, your red pencil now just beautifully skips over the top. And that's one of the reasons why I love Pro Colour so much. I think they're far more versatile than people realise. Okay. Let me zoom back out for you. Lovely. Lay some colour down. You can do this quite quickly. Just remember to keep turning your pencil. Take it all the way down to this edge here. Just 
So it's a cross hatching shading. You're going to go one direction. And then you can go the other direction and that will lay down a layer of colour quicker. Colour pencil naturally takes many, many hours. So to get a layer of colour on the surface does help things. Okay, so let's do that segment first. Now I got out a darker red. Along this edge, this segment, vary it to make it more three-dimensional along this top edge and this side. And you can do the same, just a little bit on this bottom edge here. Okay. I've changed back to my primary red and then I'm going to add some more pigment to the paper. Now, if you have something called, these are quite neat, they're called the Derwent Blender Pen. And what it is, is it's an alcohol-based solvent pen. Now, don't worry if you haven't got one. If you haven't got one, just carry on using your pencil and eventually you'll add enough pigment and binder to the paper that it will become smooth. But if you do have one of these, what you can do is just it breaks down the binder of the pencil. They work particularly well with Pro Colour. And it, you have to just be careful over that yellow that you don't press too hard and you don't blend the yellow in with it too. Okay, and don't forget to put the lid on afterwards because it isn't an alcohol pen, so it will evaporate. Okay, and then straight away, you can go in with your pencil. Excuse my dog barking in the background. Okay, going back to the Crimson Lake, which is a darker pencil. Because you've put the layer of blender pen on, if you've got one of those, just increases the depth of the pencil slightly. It's easier to use almost. Okay, so we've got that segment done. And you can carry on and do the same for this segment. There's a small oval shape here. Leave that out. Not 
Now what I'm not going to do is draw around it. I'm going to shade around it. Okay, so I'm taking the bright red. So it's more of an orange red, so you could use an orange. If you don't have a bright red, you could use a bit of orange here, just to brighten it up. It's a lot of cars outside today, I do apologize. I'm just gonna take my blender pen Just pull these layers together. Now the blend pen comes in two sizes. Comes in a small one as well, which is great for little edges. You can just dab it on, just to soften it. So for neat little areas. And let's do this section here. So let's draw a line there. Now this area here where we did the purple, just flick your red pencil, so I'm using the Crimson Lake which is the darker one, flick it into your purple. Again, don't draw around it. So you want it to look nice and natural. Then take it across to here and flick it in. And then either add more layers of pencil or use a solvent just to pull those layers together. And if you want to make it more vibrant, go in with pencil again afterwards. There's no limit to how many times you can use pencil on your paper. I'm using the new Durbant Light Fast paper, which I can use 30 layers on this. It just takes more and more and more. So there's no limit to how many you can get on. Just carry on until you run out of tooth. And then you'll see it almost go shiny. There's this area here. We just want to get the red on here. There's a little triangle. Let's miss this out.
and I'm using primary red. Now again, if you haven't managed to keep up, don't worry, because you can pause it, rewind it. I'm going to change to the bright red, which is the orange red. As I go up to the yellow, flick it into it. Release your pressure slightly. So you're layering or glazing on top of it. Okay. And then cross hatch this area. Now there is a comments button at the bottom, so if you want to ask any questions, my colleague is live, so if you do need to ask anything, he can answer for you. So don't, just because I, I'm caught up describing it, don't feel as though you can't get help. By all means, do ask your question, and I will always go back into the feed afterwards and I will answer every single one of your questions for you. So please don't feel as though you can't ask questions. You'll find the button at the bottom of the live feed screen. It looks like a speech bubble. Okay, so I've just taken the blender pen. and smushed it over. Then I'm just going to drag it over and lightly blend all the layers together to make the wing one whole piece. And this is where you can Put in some small details over the yellow. Okay. Now around this edge, here, it's comprised of two browns. I want you to get out please a Van Dyke brown and a brown ochre. So a brown ochre is a yellowy brown and the Van Dyke brown is a darker brown actually and can you please get out a really dark brown. I'm going to be using a chocolate brown so if you're using Pro Colour, it's 58, 56 and 59. If you're not using Pro Colour, don't worry, it's chocolate, Van Dyke Brown and Brown Okra. Okay, now if I whiz you over to this side of the wing. We've got paler areas interspersed with the darker ones. Okay. So we're going to recreate similar on this side of the ring. So we're going to start off with here. So with your paler brown, which this is a brown ochre, let's put some pale brown in here. Take it right up to the body. What you don't want is a white join where your pencil layers don't quite meet. Let me make sure you've got the correct. That's it. 
area showing on the camera. And then let's put some lighter brown areas all the way around the edge of the butterfly's wing. Like banding. There's an oval here. Let me just draw around it so you can see it. Here, okay. Shade some brown ochre over the top. And over the bottom. Then let's move around the edge of this wing. So again, random bands. Colour pencil goes through a stage where it really doesn't look much and you think, is it ever going to come out the other side? Is it going to look good? Or is it go we call it the ugly stage. Don't worry if it's going through the ugly stage at all. It happens all the time. It's quite normal. Okay, so this is starting to go through its ugly stage and you think, gosh, is it going to come together? I promise you it will. Okay, so take your Van Dyke Brown. Flick from the bottom edge up over your ochre. So you're layering your colours. And you can do that all the way around the edge. Overlay the brown ochre so it's nice and natural and not stripy. So it doesn't have that colouring book look to it afterwards. So go from the outer edge of the area, flick over, okay? Now this is where one wing goes over the other. So let's shadow that bit. Let's move your camera over. Again, let's do the outer edge and flip up. Now, if you remember, I asked you to get out a chocolate. Now, a chocolate is a really dark brown, and this is to add some depth and some extra tone to our picture. 
So let's go back over to the left side of this wing. Keep it nice and sharp. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to outline everything because then it will become comic book like, which is not what we want for this butterfly. So just on some areas, And we're going to put in these bands. Okay, so these bands here along the outside of the wing, we're going to put them in along the edge. Keep them spaced apart. Make sure you use a very, very sharp point. Let's add the dark brown area. Okay, so you're going to go from this section here. I want you to use a pressure similar to what you'd write with. Take it from the line and flick over. And then you can pop your chocolate away for now. I'd like you to get out to your light blue. It's like a cyan blue. And there's an area just at the bottom of each wing. Using an elliptical pencil stroke, which is small circles going round and round. Just pop it in at the bottom. And there's also an area, Now I got you to draw out on your line drawing, just here is an oval. To the left of the oval, there's that shape. Just make some patterns, like a scumbling pattern, inside of it with the same blue. And there's two shapes here, so scumble. So scumbling is like taking your pencil for a walk. Go round and round. So it's creating textures, which is something you can do with a firm pencil. So we don't want it nice and smooth. Now take up back your reds. So your reds will be a primary red, which your crimson lake, and your bright red. And here, don't forget we had our yellow embossed lines in. So we're going to keep those, we're not going to lose those. I'd like you to put in your primary red first. Now don't forget to give it a sharpen. We didn't sharpen it after we last used it. So you're gonna hear my sh super point sharpener. The reason why I like this is it keeps my pencils needle sharp. So my camera's too close for me to show you, but I'll show you at the end, which is my favorite sharpener to use for pencils. So this section here, I want to take from here around the body and we're actually going to go all the way 
down to here. Leave this band there. Cross hatch to a laying down colour. All the way down. the bottom of the wing. So you can see that the picture is starting to fill up with colour. Now I haven't got colour transfer. Normally I would suggest that you always put a piece of paper under your hand when you're working with colour pencil. You don't get that with these. so which is a good job but normally I would say to you if you're working with colour pencil always put a piece of paper underneath your hand because you will move the pigment around luckily for me pro colour has a low dust formulation or I would have been in a mess by now so it doesn't smudge but normally do put a piece of paper under your hand so you're not dragging the pigment around with you Okay, now take your Crimson Lake, which is the darker one, give it a sharpen. And just by the body, it's a lot darker. So increase your pressure and use the sharpest point on your pencil. Just around the body here. Just darken it up. Now if you get pencil crumbs, don't sweep them with your hand. Use a brush or the end of your eraser brush just to sweep them away. Now if you've got the blender pen or solvent, this is where you can blend your pencil together and it will make it a little bit more vibrant as well and speed things up for you. If you haven't, don't worry, just keep applying your pencil. When you get to this bottom edge, flick it. Over the top of the brown ochre and the Van Dyke. And take your orange, the orange red, which in my case is a primary red. Just add another layer of pigment. Just to brighten it up even more. Now you can see I've left this area free of pencil. That's deliberate. Don't worry if you filled it in, you know, it's not the end of the world at all. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is black. So can you please get me out a black? So I've got the pro colour ivory black. So if you can get me out a black, that'd be brilliant. Now, this bit's really important to keep super sharp. Okay, so this is where having a helical pencil sharpener 
is a really good idea because that's how you get a super point. Draw in your antenna. Okay, try and keep it the sharpest point of your pencil. And then just leave the end, a little circle at the end. Okay? And then we embossed these lines on this band with your really sharp black. I'm going to turn my hand so you can see it on the camera. I'm going to try and zoom in for you as well. You're going to use your black and it's going to skip over the yellow lines that you embossed. And you'll see them show up. You have to go against them to draw the opposite way. And you'll see them starting to show through. And then when you see them show through, then you can add color either side of them. Okay, so you embossed with your colour pencil. And that's what you can do with a firm pencil. Brilliant, let me zoom back out. We're going to put this area in, get nice and tight up to that red line then. What you don't want is a halo of colour. Let's shade this in. And this is where it's going to suddenly start coming to life. So cross hatch it in. Slightly overlap it with your red. Keep rotating it. Now you want to slightly overlap. You don't want just a coloured in shape. Okay. And we're going to go to this shape we've left here. We're going to do the same. Oh, here we are, press too hard. Now that's what happens when you press too hard like me. I'm very heavy handed. So I do bear down on my pencil way too hard, really. If it does that, sharpen it. Now what I've done it there is I didn't have the angle of my pencil upright enough. So I bared down my pencil at too shallow an angle and it snapped off. What I should have done is lift my pencil up and have it a more of a 90 degree angle to the paper to push the pigment into it. Okay, so this is where the wing overlaps. So we want this edge nice and tight. See, I've done it again, I'm terrible at it. Okay, but to save sharpening, I'm just gonna carry on. I'll just rotate it. Okay, so I've got pencil crumbs there. Push them away. Okay, so now I've got a pencil mark where I press too tight. With Pro Color, just lift it off with a pencil eraser. I do like these. And then put it back in with your red. I do like these pencil erasers. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to do the large area of black, which is here. But first of all, the area I want to concentrate on is this one here. So what I want you to do is go along the bottom of the C shape and flick up along this bottom edge. And I'll try not to press too hard again this time. The 
The ideal thing to do when you're building up black is to build it up in layers and not try and go too heavy in one go. In case you have any crumbs, brush them away. Now let's cross hatch this big area. So you can see the butterfly is really starting to take shape. And when you've done your butterfly, please do tag Derwent Artificial in your finished pieces and tag it with hashtag butterfly draw along so we can see your artwork. That would be fantastic. Okay, so we've got the black in there. Now it's patchy. And we don't want patchy. So what we can do with this is although we used red before and we're going on our blending pen. Let me just sweep these dustings away. Okay, so we used red before on our blending pen. Well, that doesn't matter. We're going to use it to blend the black now. Now, it's not going to ruin the blending pen by using it with black because we can clean it after. It's really easy to clean. I'll share a little tip with you. So let's just blend that black and that will save a lot of time. That's why a lot of pencil and colour pencil artists like to use solvent. And you see I left a little area to the left of the black there. Okay, now to clean a blender pen after you've used black, my tip for you would be get a an old scrap of paper and just scribble with it and as you can see it just comes off that's it your blender pen is cleaned it does stain the end of the pen but it's clean to use then just get your black pencil and just blend over the top and just soften the edges to make it look more natural And your last bit of black to do is this area here. I need to sharpen my pencil. Now, if you remember, I said right at the beginning, your butterfly is symmetrical. So, whereas I'll have done both sides today, you'll have done one. So I'm hoping you'll carry on now. Maybe not today, but this is something with colour pencil that you can pick up at home. So maybe when you're sat quietly of an evening or in the daytime, you can take it outside on a nice day. And you can put away. That's what's nice about it, is you can put it away. You it's not messy. So I hope you carry on and finish it and share your finished results because I would love to see them, see what you do. Okay, so I'm using an elliptical pencil stroke. Now an elliptical pencil stroke means that your layers of pencil are overlapping and it gives you a really nice smooth blend. So you're going round in circles. 
Can you see it pressed too hard again? I'm so heavy handed. Okay, lovely. Now, if you want, you can use solvent or a blender pen just to pull those blends together even more. Again, it's not compulsory. So the only bit we've got left to whiz over and quickly do is I have left to show you one half of the body. Now this is really quick. Now how I did this is I'd like you to pick up chocolate and let's have burnt carmine and we will have Van Dyke Brown. So we're going to take Van Dyke Brown and we're going to take Burnt Carmine. I love Burnt Carmine. I use Burnt Carmine a lot when I'm painting as well. And we're going to use Chocolate, which is a very dark brown. Now this is a slightly different pencil stroke. It's one I use when I'm doing hair and fur on animals. And it's a flicking pencil stroke. And I want you to go from root and flick it on the page. So from the root, flick and lift off. Okay, so let me quickly show you on a piece of paper. It's a flicking one. And what it gives you is if you don't flick, what you get is a square end. You don't get that lovely natural fur stroke. So put your pencil on and flick it. Okay, so let's just build up the hairs going down the body of the butterfly. Vary your pencils for some nice shades and overlap. Now, Pro Color scan true to color. So, color pencils, and I put some nice bent carmine in here. Color pencils can be used for prints. So you can have some nice prints done of your work, or you can turn this into a greetings card if you like. Now, Pro Color are really nice and easy to scan, and they don't take much manipulation to get the original the same at all. So do feel free to turn these into greeting cards when you're finished. Make them into a digital greeting card would be great. Okay, curve your pencil strokes. And we're nearly done. And let's take a bit of yellow ochre just along here. And we've nearly finished our peacock butterfly in colour pencil. So flick from root to tip. And then take a chocolate just for some added depth to do the head. Okay, so we've created a peacock butterfly that you can finish off at home in your own time. Please do share it. Tag Derwent Artificial. You can use the hashtag draw along butterfly. Let me zoom out for you. Okay, so that's how it will look when you're finished. I'll take a photograph and upload it for you. Now I did say to you, I would also show you the pencil sharpener I use for Pro Color. It's the Super Point Mini. These are the ones I use for color pencil. I find them easier to use and it makes a nice Super Point. So thank you so much for joining me today. And 
take care and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Hope you've enjoyed it.